This week I'm bringing you an encore presentation of a 3JS beginner tutorial animating stuff. It's been remixed and remastered and I hope you enjoy it. I've got a really basic scene set up here where I'm importing the library, the camera, got a renderer. I'm creating a box geometry, a basic material, and then a mesh, which represents that 3D object and adding it to the scene. In this looping function here, after I call it, I just call it again and again using this request animation frame method to continually update the box. If I just comment out the Y, now it's just rotating on the X axis or it's just rotating on the Z axis or the Z and the Y axis, that kind of thing. We can change the appearance of the box with a normal material. I'm gonna remove this color. And now each face has a different color and that color changes as the orientation of the box changes. Let's make that a sphere instead. And now we've got this ball, which is rotating around. And I want to be able to see the different faces more clearly. I think it's called shading three flat. And now each face has a nice hard edge. One other fun stuff can we do? We could add a bunch of them and animate them in different ways. I double clicked on the word box, the variable, and then I type command D on my keyboard to call that ball instead. And instead of just adding one ball, let's add a bunch. Function add ball, bearing ball, close bracket. That known balls, if it was to break, create a for loop. Or let I mean, zero i is less than num ball on i plus equal one, like ball equal get ball and scene dot emulate ball. What what happened? Oh, I, I call get ball and add ball. Let's do get ball instead. Let's move the balls around a little bit so that we can actually see see them. Right now they're all kind of stacked on top of each other. In fact, if we just rotate them, okay, shin, X. Oops. And then give it a range, uh, math dot pi. Look at that. And it looks pretty weird and cool. Or to keep that. Go down and about that. Position dot X iterus. Utility. Random float spread, I don't know, 10. Now the balls are all spread out and rotated on the X axis. By the way, I'd like to be able to move around inside the scene, which I can't really do right now. Imports this tool called the Orbit Controls, instantiate that tool by creating a new Orbit Controls, passing in the camera and the canvas, the DOM element. So now if I save, I can use my mouse, click and drag to move around inside the scene and I can use the scroll wheel or the magic mouse to zoom in and out. Much more useful. Let's spread those balls out on the Z axis as well. By the way, instead of copying and pasting that line, I could highlight the line and then on my keyboard, type command shift D to do the same thing. And now change X to Z, save it. Oh, that's rotation, darn it. I copied the wrong line. Let's try that. Goes to Z. Now, balls are all spread out on a plate. Let's move the camera position back a little bit further. Like six, grand shift D. Change the, the Y position as well to D. That way I don't have to zoom out every time. Because I'm already zoomed out. Cool. Pretty cool, right? Next, I'll go through each ball. Determine if it's intersecting with another ball and then tell them to push each other apart until they're no longer intersecting. Reloaded. We'll gently push each other away so that they all have a little bit of space between them. Let's change the camera angle so you can see that a little bit more clearly. Now for up for up above, they just kind of space each other out. First thing we'll do is update the get ball method. Instead of simply returning that mesh, which I, I call ball, we're going to return a JavaScript object that contains a mesh property, referring to that mesh that we created. Okay, and this will break because now we need to add that mesh 
to the screen, to the scene rather. Next thing I want to add is an update method that will get called in our animate method. Okay, and right now it does nothing. Actually, no, it does something. Let's say it takes our mesh rotation plus equals some value or let's give it rotation X. This is just a temporary variable called rote and we'll give it a value between the 0 0.1 and or 0 0.2 and a negative zero. Now I've saved it. Nothing changes because we haven't added the, the part where we tell each ball to update. And to do that, we'll say balls dot for each ball b dot update. Okay. And now that's still that's going to fail. In fact, there's an error now too. I think that is the hotkey. I just didn't have it. So balls is not defined. Whoops. Balls balls equals now balls defined, but they're not animating, and that's because we didn't add each one of these ball to that ball ray. Balls dot push. Great. Now each one of them is ran randomly rotating, um, and that's kind of cool, isn't it? That's not what we were looking for. Come with that out, but this just to show you that now with each frame. Each time this animate method is called, we're calling this update. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we go on. I wanted to create a couple of variables that x equal this value. Okay. And let z equal oops, this value. This is not z. And we're going to add some velocity property. The velocity is something we'll add to a mesh's position with each frame. Just to get us started, I'll just grab this random float spread method. The a number you pass in here tells 3JS the range in which you want random numbers. So 10 means you want random numbers between negative 10 and 10. So let's say you want a, a velocity between negative 1 and 1. And in here, I want to update that x plus equals velocity dot x z dot. Saved it. Nothing's happening. We need to add these lines and I'll update them. So now all the balls shoot off in different directions forever. I'd kind of like a way to stop them from shooting off, like to pause the motion. To do that, I need to add some functionality in here to tell this to pause. For example, I need to say if we're paused, let's say if we're not paused, if pause is equal to false, then do this update. Otherwise, don't do it. Um, so right now, pause is not defined. Let's just define it. Let paused false. Great. And if I set that to true, now nothing nothing changes because we're paused i want the code to listen for key presses we'll say window dot add event listener key down and we'll give it a method to run every time the key is pressed key down on oh wait handle key down handle key down it takes an event yeah let's just console dot log that event on with pull out console every time i have the browser in focus and i type a key i'm going to get this keyboard event i want the escape key i'm going to use that as the key to toggle paused and unpaused so i can see inside this keyboard event you guys all see that it has a bunch of properties most of which i don't care about i just want this key property and its value is a state so inside of this key handle key down method i'm going to say current key equals event and what i'm doing is using javascript destructuring to take that event object just pull out the property i want so that i can use it on this escape escape 
that's the string I'm looking for. I'm just assigning it to a variable because I like the way it looks in the code. And if the t is equal to escape paused variable is equal to not paused variable. This line just toggles the value. If the value starts out as true, you get the escape key, this is run, and the value will be false. If it's false, then it will be true. It just toggles it. So let's see how that looks. I'm in the browser, I hit escape, hit escape again, escape. Works exactly as I built. Yay. I want to change the way the balls are moving now so that, first of all, before I change the way the balls are moving, let's change the position of the camera so we have more of like a, a overhead view, like kind of like that. And if I unpause, it just fly off the screen. Right now they're just moving in a random direction. Which is kind of cool. Just change this back to false so it'll animate by default. But I want them to respond to one another the way I showed at the beginning of the video. So to do that, I have to do a bit of calculation. I need to compare each ball to another ball one at a time and see, are they overlapping? And if they are overlapping, how exactly, like what's the orientation, the direction to travel, and then move them in that direction. I've already got the velocity plugged in. What I want to do now is to calculate the direction of the overlap. So const direction equal to new three. And now, oh, uh, the one thing I forgot to add is damping. Let's define a damping factor. Const damping mud equal to zero point. Here's how we use that. Velocity dot x times equals damping mud and same with z. So this is acting like friction. Check it out. The balls move for a while and then they slowly stop. If I were to increase the value, so they stop a lot faster than if I reduce it, they slow down, but really gradually. I think 0.98 is a kind of sweet spot for us right now. The action needs to not be here and here. If I'm going to loop over all the walls in the scene, By the way, this is immediately going to break it because I haven't defined all balls. I want to pass all balls into that update function here in the animate. That balls array we created earlier. So now I have access to every ball and I'm going to loop over them. And for each ball, I'm going to distance. I'm going to calculate this distance. I'm going to take the, the, the first ball. Start with this one. Actually, it needs, it's not the ball. It's the, the 3D object that that ball has, the mesh. Um, it's also not the mesh. It's the position property of the mesh. I'm going to say the distance to my mesh. This update function is being called on each ball, and each ball will look at all other balls. It's not actually very optimized, right? Um, but it's going to do the trick for our small number of balls. It's going to look... It's, for each ball, it's going to look at all the other balls and say, are you overlapping with me? And that's what this calculates. If distance is less than radius times 2. Radius, we haven't defined that. Well, let's define radius. Up here above the geometry. Then it's radius. Let's pull up 3. When you define a new sphere geometry like I did here, it defaults to 1. So now I'm just passing in value here if it's like I don't know why it stopped working. Let's have a look. Because distance two is not well, distance two. This guy here. Distance oh my bad. Great. It's working again. Although it's not calculating the distance yet. We we've just figured out whether or not we're overlapping. Now let's compute the direction in which we need to move. We'll do that using this uh, sub vectors. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Subtracting vectors, maybe? Mesh dot position. 
bash dot position. Okay, and then we're going to normalize that value. And just multiply. Scaly. And let's just make this value 0.1. For now, it's just a nice small value. Actually, I'll set it to one. Um, great. Now we know the direction, but we're still not using that. Let's use it here. I'll say for each ball, it's velocity plus equals direction dot x. And keep the same thing for z. Oops, forgot to add that. So this is going to cause an error. Here's why we didn't expose the velocity property of each of these balls. Right now, each ball has an update method and it has a mesh property. Exposed it. It's defined here, and now I'm exposing it here. Wow. So they really exploded. If I zoom out, if I zoom the camera out from the get-go, you can see them explode a little more. Go to 52. And that's... I think that's an indication that our this value here, this multiply scalar, is way too high. Let's drop that down by a factor of 10. Still too high. Another factor of 10. Oh, now we're getting close. So how about one more factor of 10? See how they push each other apart? Oh, I love that. that let's make this explicit. Next time we come to visit this code, we'll, we'll know it'll be easier to read. Ring equals boom. Here we go. And if we shrink the size of the balls, there's still list to make them tiny balls. Still works. Make them regular size the balls. And that's it. Cool. I hope you enjoyed that. Be sure to check out some of my other videos if you're interested in animating and creating 3D content on the web. And as always, thanks for coming by. I'll see you in the next one.